potato muchos. What are they like? They taste like you're in Mexico City. Sun on your back, you hear some music. It gets louder as you walk. You're in the middle of a street party. People singing, dancing. You smell cooking. Food everywhere. People sharing, smiling, laughing. Perfecto. That's what Tato Muchos taste like. Right. I'll give them a go, so. Tato Muchos. A fiesta for all the senses. Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. I am so excited to bring this shout out to you because with me, we have a professional speaker, author, consultant, sales trainer, and a business coach who has over two decades, yes, two decades of experience in direct sales and leadership. He has successfully built an international team of over 6,000 independent associates across North America and Canada. He has served high-level leadership positions that specialize in working with companies and entrepreneurs and direct sellers, both individually and corporately. He has a focus to identify hidden potential and reach for the best for everybody that's involved with all of the things that he does. I absolutely love it because he's a lifelong student of personal development and more. I want to also talk about his book, and he has wrote The Rele Relevance Gap, and it's really geared for those that are struggling with transition during a time of extreme change, and there are so many of us who not only know that issue really well, but are ready to embrace something that's going to empower us, drive us, and help us move to excellence. So with me today is Scott Scantlin. Welcome. Hi, Rebecca. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here uh, with you today and looking forward to sharing some information with you um, about, uh, you know, about my book and, you know, just kind of where all that came from and super excited to be with you here today. So looking forward to, uh, to sharing. I'm ready to rock because the information that you are ready to share with us is from personal experience. And one of the things that really allows people to just hone in on what you're saying and embrace it is somebody that's been there, done it, has not only changed their lives, but the lives of many. And being someone that has contributed corporately and individually, along with over 6,000 in your organization, I mean, you're bringing it home and it's relevant. So let's talk a minute about how you got into what you're doing. And then I wanna talk about your book because this is just really significant. And I know that the audience is gonna be ready for it. Great, yeah, so um, yeah, so I, I've been, I've been you know, entrepreneur uh, in business for over 20 years. Um, matter of fact, I started, I started early. I was kind of an early adapter. <clears throat> I, got out of, uh, I got out of school and you know, I really kind of realized very quickly that employment didn't suit me well. <laughs> I didn't, um, you know, I had, you know, just had the experience of um, having the opportunity to travel and do some other things. And I was looking for more flexibility in my life. And so, um, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I could hold down jobs. I just didn't want to stay in them. And <laughs> that's when I got involved in the cellular phone industry. I was kind of an early adapter to disruptive models. I was looking for products, services, things that, you know, oh, apologize. Sorry about that. Let me make sure I got that on on mute there. I apologize. So, um, kind of an, speaking of cell phones, right? Um, so, <laughs> it just went off at just the time was I that was planned. On business, <laughs> well planned, right? So, so I had uh, I was an early adapter. I was looking for products nobody owned, everyone needs, everyone's going to buy. It was changing a market or an industry, and the cellular phone industry was the very first real model out there for me. Um, it was a disruptive model of its time. As a matter of fact, it, it put the long distance business out of business. And because we used to have long distance bills, I can remember, you know, paying them and uh, they were expensive. I mean, they were, they were high dollar. 
<laughs> um, and that was the first change that really went on. And I had a couple of business partners and we did well for a while, but there was a recession and we struggled to make ends meet. And, you know, I was looking for something different to do. And so I was, you know, researching industries and, and products and services. And so I ended up uh, finding this company, Legal Shield, which I got involved with. Uh, and I've been with this company, Legal Shield, for over 22 years now. And it was a product nobody owned, everybody needs, everyone's going to buy. I mean, at the time it had 200,000, you know, customers in 44 states. Today it's in, you know, all 50 states, all seven provinces in Canada, 1.75 million families on the books, covers four and a half million lives. It's app based, so it's a disruptive model. Kind of like Uber, Lyft, you know, all those different things where you use an app and it's changing an industry, right? So right. that's what I'm always kind of looking for. Like Legal Shield is an app, it's technologically up to speed and it's changing an industry, just like Uber did for taxi cabs or, um, you know, uh, uh, Netflix did for the movies or what Airbnb is doing for hotels and, and, and go back 22 years, what cellular phones did to the telecommunications industry. So I was always an early adapter. Um, but along the way, I picked up through leadership, okay, personal development, you know, and, and it's interesting because where I ended up, you know, it all started with a seed my mother planted in me when she gave me an Anthony Robbins program when I was like 26, you know, 25, 26 years old, you know, called Awaken the Giant Within, you know, I read yes. his book, did his program, and matter of fact, I read that book twice, it's a 700-page book, I read it twice, it was the first time in my mind that I was actually excited about something that I was learning. And I thought, oh, I want to do this. You know, this makes sense. And so, you know, moving from there until, you know, all the different leadership that we've had the opportunity to experience over the years and investing into, you know, personal development for 22 years, literally 22 year period of investment into personal development. Um, you know, I just always, always inspired. I love to read. And now I decided finally, I always wanted to write a book. I finally wrote a book and uh, it was an awesome experience. And so that's kind of how I got to where I'm at right now. Well, I want to hear about this because yeah. the, it, not only writing the book is hard, but the process of getting it published and marketed is pretty difficult as well. But some, it's really interesting how writing and authorship works because you have something in your mind for a long time and then putting it on paper and doing your rough draft and then rewriting it. It's pretty exciting because it also expands everything within you and gives you more that you want to share. So I want to hear your experience and how it led you to this book. I, and I want to see it too, if you'll hold it up. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the book. It's called, sorry, I got my little notes there. It's called The uh, the Relevance Gap, okay? How to Stay Relevant and Thrive in a Fast-Changing World, okay? That's the title. And what happened for me was I, I, I you know, decided I was going to write a book. And I always wanted to write a book. And I was, you know, I'm, all, I'm really, like I said, I mean, I'm serious when I say I'm into personal development. I love personal development. I was studying some different guys at the time and you know, getting up really early in the morning and, and doing some specific things. And two of the guys I was studying, one was Jim Quick with Quick Learning, and he has a speed reading course that is fantastic. <laughs> I took it, and it was incredible. I mean, I was reading, you know, three, four hundred words a minute. I mean, I was going through the practice of learning how to do that. Well, another guy that Jim Quick would interview quite often was a guy named, by the name of Stephen Kotler, and Stephen Kotler is the author of The Rise of Superman. Have you, you heard of Stephen Kotler before? Um, so, I believe that I have. It's just been quite some time and I'm the wheels are turning here. Yeah. So so Stephen Kotler uh is, you know, like the president or the founder of the Human Genome Project where they're mapping the human genome and you know, uh that's why his books, you know, the the, the title of his books, The Rise of Superman and he studies like flow states and all this different stuff frequencies and all these things that are really just next level personal development that we're going to see over the next 10, 15, 20 years become prevalent and things that we do, it'll become normalized. But um, I'm studying Stephen Kotler and he's talking about writing a book. And this is how this all started. I'm kind of going down this road and he says the best time to write, because he's talking about frequencies, when you get up in the morning, you're in alpha state, right? So there's these different states that you're in and alpha state is the doorway to the subconscious mind. So you want to wake up early if you're going to write. I talk about it in my book, right? So you want to wake up really early in the morning if you're going to write. 
And it's the best time to do it. Why? Because the, the phone hasn't rang. You haven't, don't check your email. Don't check your text messages. Don't let anything that could trigger any level of emotion enter your mind, right? You just want to be fresh. You know, sit down at your computer. And so I would be up and I'd yeah. write from 4.30 to about 7 a.m. every morning, you know. Wow. Probably three days a week, sometimes four days a week. And then after a while, that became addictive. And I started, I'd do that. And then I'd work till about two with my business. And then I'd leave and I'd go to a coffee shop and write for like two more hours. And that's that incredible. Like four, yeah. So, yeah. That's incredible because there's so many authors that, you know, they have brain fog or they just, they want to write and they just don't have a dedicated schedule, which gets them to their goal. And so it takes a little bit longer. And here you are, you are completely dedicated. You're having a passion about what you want to share and it's all relevant. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, I, and I had that, I mean, I literally had it in my calendar, you know, and uh, the other thing that was important was knowing what the average book, the average book is 63,000 words, right? So I thought, okay, well, I need to write 63,000 words. I need to write at least a thousand words a day. So that was the initial goal. And I didn't write a thousand words a day right off the bat, but you know, next thing you know, I'm writing, you know, 300 words, then 500 words. The next thing you know, I'm writing a thousand words a day, you know, and I'm, so, I'm just, yeah. I want to share that with the audience because you've got your book. I don't know how many pages you're in, but the goal that got you there was not only your passion, but you had a dedicated focus on how many words that you needed to attain and, and you went with it. So this is, this is really neat. I don't want to give away all the chapters in your book, but is there a significant part that you would think really every one of us can embrace this particular chapter and make something different happen in our life because of it? Yeah, you know, I think the first three chapters of the book are, are really intense because it's addressing the need the, and the challenge and the emotional state people are in right now. You know, it's, you know, we, we deal with, you know, everything has a, a level of emotion, emotional energy attached to it. And we're dealing with, you know, two of the most imp powerful emotions, which is, which is fear and hope. You know, those two right there, we're like constantly dealing with those two things. And I think if, if for most people, maybe you felt like I have felt um, over the last, like, five or six or seven years, because, you know, we go back 10 years and things were much different. You know, people actually answered their phones. People don't answer phones anymore. It's true. They, you know, like you, that changes everything. I'm in sales and marketing and I drive and I'm in leadership and I, you know, we're in the business of contacting people and communicating with people. And, you know, first came caller ID, you know, then caller ID showed up on smartphones. And then once the smartphone had caller ID and text messaging and everything, people's like, I'm, I'm not going to answer this call unless you text me first, unless you're my mom, dad, brother, or sister. And then sometimes I might even answer for you, you know, like, you know, That's like for your, for your parents and your family, like, like you're like busy. People are living minute to minute and, and frame to frame right now. Like everything is in, you know, we can get so much more done. Technology is awesome. But for a lot of people, especially five years ago, three years ago, two years ago, even a year ago, I'll be honest with you, before the pandemic, because I wrote the book, it took me 18 months to write and publish the book. And I put it out in November of 2019. And I was traveling, I was selling books, I was speaking, I was talking to all these people. And then out of nowhere in March, COVID hit. And it just was like, everything I was talking about in the book went fast forward. And all of a sudden people realized, whoa, he wasn't messing around. You know, the more you wait to change, if you don't adapt and change, you become irrelevant. That's why that's it's right. the relevance gap. You know, that's the gap between where you are and, you know, the speed of everything changing around you. That's what the relevance gap is. So if you're here and change is all the way up here and you've not made the adaptations to adjust to that change, if you've not begun to acquire the skills, you know, if you've not, um, um, you know, shifted your weight to how, you know, uh, corporate corporate communications are actually happening and what leadership looks like and what actually drives people and what core values are today. I mean, core values are so different 
yes. than what they were. I mean, we go back 10 years, people think about making money. You go fast forward right now, people are working about, worried about making a difference, community, making a change in the world. They're, they're less interested. You know, it's not that they don't want to live good lives, you know, and comfortable lives, but they're less interested in the amenities and they're more interested in how am I impacting the world around me? That is called a different world. Yes. And if you don't adjust, you're falling behind. And, and I think for that, people were overwhelmed in such a way. It's like, I've fallen so far behind. How do I ever catch up? And that's what the first three chapters of the book talk about. See, this is so important because I think what you're sharing, especially now, because those core values are fluid. What even was core values a year ago with the with the whole COVID lockdown is different now because people are shifting how they work from home, if they're going to work from home. And then we have a whole dichotomy of other things that are going on that if you look in the media are changing just personal mores and values. And combining all of these things is really interesting. So with what you have to share, I think this is something that people are going to be able to grasp and say, okay, I have a new perspective now, and this is going to really give me a direction that I need to go in. And I'm hoping that you get an opportunity to go, to, that all the states are starting to open back up and you can start doing your speaking again, because not only is your book something tangible, the things that you share inside, they seem intangible, but you really can have them right here in your life and make a difference. But sometimes there's some people who just need that auditory factor in with it and it's going to launch them into, into a whole nother thing. So in the meantime, you're doing a lot of other things though that can really bring people in to get them moving forward as well. So in the meantime, you've got a lot of Zoom things going on, a lot of, conf I mean, you're speaking. Um just not up on the stage where you should be like at the Marriott or um, bigger places, um, you know, a, uh, I won't even say it, but, uh, <laughs> but a lot of really uh, great places. Uh, I know that for me, uh, being in with motivational speakers way back when was a significant change in my direction, massive change in my thinking, my daily walk, with myself, with my goals, with everything from parenting to personal growth to professional growth, and you're doing it. So talk about what you're doing now that also sort of cusps all of these things together that makes it a power, a power, it just everything is powerful here, but just a power direction. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're, here's, you know, when COVID hit, you know, I was, you know, I, I, at the time I was, I had just taken on a position with our, with our corporate headquarters as a network vice president over like 10 states. Mm -hmm. And so I saw COVID hit and I thought, okay, so this changes everything. And, you know, at that point in time, it was interesting because at that point in time, I had my laptop. I literally worked off my laptop. Okay. I had a laptop. I didn't have a professional camera. Um, you know, I didn't have my, 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 in, you know, my, my 920S. <laughs> like I know what this stuff is called now. Like I got 920s. I got my I got my SkyTech gaming computer on the floor right now, and I that have was... a SkyTech gaming computer because of the video card. Because we do a lot of videos, the whole world yes. around us. Matter of fact, I got another book I'm thinking about writing called Camera On. You know, that so I think yeah. that's really important right now. Mm -hmm. I, I can't yeah. tell you. I'll tell you why after we go off air. Simply because of. Um, all of the things that I'm involved with media wise, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be in agreement because if you say focus, right? None, nobody even knows what a focus, right? Is, but you need it. Yeah. So, you know, and that's, and, that, and that's what happened. It was like, it was almost like a, a blessing in disguise at the same time. Maybe it postponed things for me a little bit, but not a big deal. I made the adjustments. Why? Because I made the technological adjustments. I have a studio. I, you know, I have led lights up here. I've got two, you know, 24 inch screens right here on both sides panels. I've got good cameras. I got a microphone right there, you know, and, and this is the, the, the office became a studio that that's what changed right now. Here's the deal. We're getting ready to go back into, you know, or out of, I guess what we call it post pandemic and people are taking off the mask and we're getting out and events and things like that are going to start back up and meeting with people face to face. But here's the deal. What did we learn along the way? Everything changed. 
Yes. Everything changed because because this doesn't, we don't, I don't, I'm not going to back away from, from Zooms. I'm going to engage Zooms even stronger. Why? Because I can meet with six, seven, eight people a day. Back then I had to schedule an appointment, get ready, get cleaned up, get in the car, drive halfway across town, meet with somebody at a coffee shop, meet with them at their office, do a presentation. Maybe if they didn't show up, I wasted half, you know, an hour, maybe an hour yes. and a half because it was a long drive. So I, I want to, I think what I'm trying to say is, I pulled back away from everything and just embraced the concept of what we were talking about in the book was you got to adapt and you got to adapt quick and you want to get out front and you want to make those, those adjustments. You know, one of the things we've been talking about on conference calls with leaders lately is uh, camera on. That's where we came up with that title. I and love it. I got a guy, I'm, I'm, I, a book I'm reading, another book and I'll plug it. It's called virtual selling by Jeb Blunt. Lift it up just a little bit long. Yeah, virtual, uh, there we go. There we go. Selling by Jeb Blunt. This book is smoking. It's <laughs> it's red hot. I, I highly recommend it. And one of the things he talks about there is that you know people need to get are uncomfortable in front of a camera. And matter of fact, uh, most people in a Zoom, you'll notice it. You maybe even notice it yourself is that they're looking at themselves sixty five to seventy percent of the time because they're more worried about what they look like in their background and all these types of things. But you got to get comfortable in front of a camera because we're going to live in front of cameras. This is going to be yes. critical to the growth of your business. And the one way you do that is camera on all the time. Start all the time. Camera on. Yep. And then just get, because here's the deal. If I'm going to go to a meeting with somebody and I'm going to go meet with you at a coffee shop, I'm not going to show up in my pajamas with my camera off because you can't do that there, right? You know what right. I'm saying? Like, we're at a coffee shop. I got to be dressed up, prepared, ready to do my presentation, meet with you, have a conversation, eye contact, right? All this stuff, right? So these are the little things that I didn't write about in my book that we didn't know. We didn't, we didn't know. Like, like you see what I'm saying? Like, we, it, 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 it makes a reference to things moving in this direction and why we got to adapt and why we got to change. But we did, there's a lot of things that we didn't know. So there is so a lot are, of things we didn't know. Yeah. 21st Crazy. century, right? We're moving I, on. It, I think it's really neat though, because what oftentimes we really don't think about is that we're in front of cameras all day long. Everywhere we, if, when you're driving, you're going through traffic cameras. When you go to a store, their cameras are on. Not only do they have surveillance cameras, but they have Camera's right out in the open. We're always on and we live in a world of selfies. Yeah. And um, so, but yeah, it's kind of like from here up. But if you make your studio, you go in and you feel with a business mindset, like you were going to meet somebody, say, to do a business presentation, I don't know, at Starbucks or somewhere like that, you're empowering yourself. When you sit down, and you're in front of eight other people. Now, I mean, you are really just doing a lot for your growth and for theirs because your productivity level is going to increase. You're not just meeting, like you said, with one person for one hour. You're meeting with eight people, which would have taken originally eight hours to do. You've done yeah. it in an hour, and now you can meet with eight more later on <laughs> the rest of the end of the day. And, um, and you have just doubled your productivity. And if we look at this shift and the relevance gap that we have just, you know, embarked on. And some of them, some of us have gotten through it. Some of us are still kind of trying to figure out exactly what niche we want to work and how we want to work it. But if we take your principles and apply them, life is going to change. There's going to be some major differences going on. And it's pretty neat. It's really neat. And if somebody wants to work with you one on one, you're there for them because the business that you do is also something that is really going to be life changing for so many. It already has been. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it really is an incredible time to be a leader and to be able to carry a banner of responsibility, you know. A uh, good friend of mine said this, and I, I think I think I wrote it down. I got it here somewhere. Oh, yeah, this was great. He said this, Darnell Self, really good friend of mine. National Bla Black Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year. Incredible guy. I will he tell you, I heard something he was talking about just yesterday, as a matter of fact, and talk about a power pitch. It was unreal. Everybody 
that was around me was just, I mean, jazzed. And you're part of this. You're part of all of this. And I absolutely, I, I love this. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he said responsibility, right? A social force that binds you to accountability to a group or a task, you know, and, and you know, you know that, look at, I mean, people need leadership right now um, in a platform, social media, um, YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, by the way. Um, you can go check out my YouTube channel and stuff there. It's yes, fun yes. to kind of check out. Um, YouTube channel, Zoom you know, just the ability to be able to do a lot more really rapidly and, and, and in an effective way. I think we're getting better at it. I think people need to learn etiquette about and, yes. and they need, need to one up their game. Honestly, you might be on Zooms and think, oh, I'm not falling behind. But if you're on Zooms and you don't have camera on and you didn't get up that morning and prepare yourself, think about it this way. You know, you're going to go to a meeting. Let's say there's a meeting tonight. You're going to go or a meeting this afternoon in an office. And you're going to go meet people there. You're not going to show up in your pajamas. You know, you're going to get up, get cleaned up, get ready, get prepared, walk out the door, get in your car, drive out the coast town. But you won't do it for Zoom because you're in your own house and you can keep the camera off and you think that's okay. But there's this thing called a conscious bias. You know, you're yes. buying those whether you're wearing pants or, or whether you're wearing, you know, pajamas. It knows. It does. You're coming off that way. Everything, you might be look good up top, but you better look good down on bottom too. You need to dress yourself appropriately and go out and meet with people. People need leadership. They need etiquette. They need coaching. They need training. And we can do that a lot faster now with technology than we've ever been able to do before, but we need to do it effectively. You know, so. A hundred percent. And not only is that dress for success on Zoom, but when you prepare yourself for the day, and you feel like you've really been productive, you've got your Zoom call done, you're ready to go to the next thing in your day. You don't have to say, well, I still have to go get ready and this is gonna be time consuming, so maybe I just won't do it. There's a lot of things that we can do. Um, some people call them excuses. Some of us are procrastinators, however you wanna coin it. There are things that take us away from being where we could be. And it's easy to be led down a different path by, um, well, let me just go back to, if we're just for success, you're going to be successful. I mean, that mindset, I, I talk about that too, with, you know, attention to detail, your makeup, your hair, do it, put on those little extras and make sure that you are polished because you never know who you're going to run into. You don't know how that Zoom, who's going to end up being on that Zoom call that makes a um, Zoom call that's going to end up making some significant change in your life. I mean, people just show up or something that you've said or because you've gotten on and you're polished and everybody else isn't, you're the next person they're going to promote. I mean, it's those those things. But I think what you're sharing is so important because we don't tend to think about all the little things, but when you have it written down like you do and we read it, it comes into our mind and we're going to start to start doing that. And we can go back to it and go, I forgot, what was this? And then just go back. It's not, it's, I think this is fantastic. And I think what you've got going is fantastic. I really want to see what you've got for your next book as well. Um, because this is something that is really, really needed right now for lots of reasons. Like I said, I'll, I'll share with you a few of them off air. And for those of you who want to know, uh, definitely stay following both Scott and I, because we're going to be sharing a lot of things that will empower you. This is what everything both of us do is about. It's about you helping you make your life move forward and change for so many positive reasons. And one of the things that we want you to do also is make sure that you connect with other people and the things that you're learning, you give them those tools too. So important. So let me ask you, Scott, where do you want the audience to connect with you at? And if you have several of them, let's, I want to know. Yeah. So, um, you know, first off, I, I do have a website, um, scottscantlin.com. So you can, you can just go straight to scottscantlin.com and, and, you know, there's some information for you there to connect with me. If you, you know, if you want to book a, um, you know, a, a complimentary consultation, I, I, I will do that. Um, if you are, uh, you know, a company looking for, you know, a speaker or have questions, 
um, you know, about maybe a podcast also as well, stuff like that, you know, that you need to book me for stuff like that would all be all be done, um, you know, through that page. It's an easy way to find me. So you can Google me, Scott Scantlin and scottscantlin.com should pop right up to the top. Um, and that's one place that you, that you can reach out and, and reach me there. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel, you know, Scott Scantlin's my, my, my name and that's my YouTube channel. It's uh, pretty easy to find. So um, you can access me there. Um, and that's another great place to, to, to go ahead and, and find me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, you know, all the social media platforms that, that you can think of. And, and so Twitter, I'm on Twitter. So you can reach out to me on any one of those platforms. Uh, I'm available and, um, you know, and hey, listen, you know, this is a great conversation that we're having here today and uh, it's needed. I I'm telling you right now, um, you know, a lot of people are, they, you know, they've been home with their kids. Their kids have gotten used to them being home. They don't want to go back to work, but their employer is saying, hey, we need to get back to work. And the world's trying to figure that out right now. And I think training on, relevance and you know being uh mindful and ready and prepared and not only that even the etiquette stuff that we're talking about right now which is just a huge issue if you need some training on that i'd love to talk to your company about that your employees about that your team about that i mean that's just something that just lights my fire i could talk to you about all day long as well as you know um you know the advanced stuff emotional intelligence, triggering flow states, all these different things that we get into in my book and the relevance gap. And then the last thing is if you want to buy my book, uh, it's $12.95 on Amazon right now. You know, it was $17.95 originally, and that was for the first year. We lowered it down to $12.95. We just left it there. It's a great price for the book. It's an easy read. Just pick it up, grab a copy of it, and all of my contact information. But if you just go in, all my contact information is in the book. But if you just go to Amazon and type in the relevance gap, it'll pop right up. This is the book you're going to see. Okay. That's I love it. Right there. And the, yeah. Okay. Hold on all the way up. Yeah. There. yeah. So I'm just making sure I don't blank out with my green screen. There we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the relevance gap, right? Okay. How to stay relevant and thrive in a fast changing world. This is the book. That's what it looks like on Amazon. Just go to Amazon, buy a copy, um, get it. And uh, all my contact information is in there. And I love it when you leave a, uh, a review, which is great. Love the reviews. I think I got 19 reviews right now, more at getting added every single day. And so, and check the reviews, read the reviews, see what other people are saying about the book, how it's affecting them and, and their business or their personal life or whatever it is that they've got going on. But I just love people reading my book. I love to hear your feedback. I mean, that means more to me than anything else, right? Didn't write the book to make money or wrote the book to change lives. And that's what we're doing. So that's where you find me. That's how you get my information. And so with that said, Rebecca, back to you. I so love this. And I just really want to share something with all of those of you who are watching or listening. I want you to think back in your life and remember a time when you just felt on fire, when you felt so good about what you were doing. And if you were affected by someone that was a motivational speaker and you can remember those things, but you may not feel like those points are applicable now. I'm going to tell you, Scott's got it going on. These things that he's sharing are applicable, applicable in our climate. And our climate is really fluid right now. And all of these things are going to address exactly, exactly what we're dealing with. And it's going to help move forward. And if you haven't, if you don't know about motivational speakers, oh my gosh, you've got to get on board with this because this changes your life. You feel empowered, you're inspired, and it gives you the drive to grow. And I try to make sure that you get all of those kinds of things at every episode that we have. And Scott's delivering it to you today. So make sure that uh, you connect with him, you check out the book, and also pass the information to others that you feel like are in the same boat or maybe could use a little bit of boost because I'm going to tell you what, when we all group together, we move forward. Thanks for tuning in today. I really appreciate you watching. And again, share this with everybody that you know and everybody you don't. Know.